This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by HelloFresh and by Manscaped. Whoo boy. So if you weren't around in the 90s, you missed a golden era of televised litigation. There was a, a whole cable TV channel devoted exclusively to courtroom footage, and the O.J. Simpson and Menendez brothers' murder trials were very good for ratings. More than two decades later, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial brought this widespread legal fascination to a new generation and to new digital platforms. And more recently, the latest in a never-ending stream of legal action related to Alex Jones and Infowars defaming the victims of the Sandy Hook mass shooting has just been captivating viewers. Yeah, this fascination is, of course, uh, pretty morbid. I mean, the OJ and Menendez trials revolved around brutal murders. The Johnny Depp trial revolved around serious allegations of domestic abuse. And these Alex Jones trials are all about how parents mourning the deaths of their small children had to live in fear for an entire decade due to vile conspiracy theories alleging they and their murdered children were paid actors. Nevertheless, seeing public figures cross-examined under penalty of perjury is fascinating, regardless of how horrific the context is. And Alex Jones is a singularly bizarre and flamboyant character, so... Yeah, it's, um, it's just surreal. Yeah. It's like, you know, all those Dolly minis, like, well, let's show a Reptar in a courtroom, Darth Vader in a courtroom. Alex Jones in a courtroom is, uh, it's just very strange. Yeah, it's, it's odd. Uh, he's also just a massive piece of shit. We, that, should, be should, be clear, we yeah. should be clear about that. Mm -hmm. Alex Jones is a terrible awful person who has made people's lives absolute hell for profit. Uh, it was one thing back when Alex Jones was just one of many conspiracy fringe grifters whose weird antics were mostly harmless and had entertainment value for even those who didn't actually believe any of his bullshit. But that era is long past. Mm -hmm. Over the last 10 years, he became an extremely influential and sometimes even mainstream adjacent voice in this country. And the results have been disastrous for anyone whose relatives believe anything they see on the internet, but particularly terrible for the parents of the Sandy Hook mass shooting victims whose lives have been destroyed via Alex Jones's defamation. And these people lost their children and were immediately called crisis actors participating in a false flag operation to take away everyone's guns. And due to harassment from Alex Jones's fans, many of them have had to move multiple times and live in constant fear for their safety. Some haven't even been able to visit their murdered children's graves. One parent killed himself, and on th that same day, Alex Jones speculated on air that he'd actually been murdered. Uh, so just a real piece of shit. And again, he has made bank off of all of this. Defaming the parents of mass shooting victims is apparently very profitable, and the trial that's been going on for the past week is entirely about damages. How much of that money? How much? And yeah, this specific case, Heslin and Lewis versus Jones, is just one of four separate defamation cases filed by Sandy Hook parents against Alec Jones and his companies. And Alex Jones already lost this case and the others a while back by basically just ignoring them. Mm -hmm. uh, and given how things have gone in this damages section of the trial where he's actually been present in the courtroom, it kind of makes sense why he and his revolving door legal team might have just chosen to quietly take the L before. Yeah, it's uh, becoming more and more apparent why he yeah. would avoid uh, being seen in public or cross-examined or anything. It's it's our patented just shut the fuck up strategy, just, you know, deployed far, far too late mm -hmm. and also eventually undone once the person stops shutting the, the fuck up and has to take the stand. Yeah, and while on the stand, talks maybe too much. Maybe a little bit too much. Yeah, uh, so basically any time Alex Jones was on the stand, which was often, this trial was a total shit show. Despite voluntarily forfeiting mounting any defense in the actual original lawsuit, he spent a bunch of time trying to defend himself on uh, free speech grounds and also pretend that he's basically broke and therefore can't pay much money in damages. Oh, jeez. Jones's attorney, meanwhile, tried to depict his client as a victim of disinformation himself. Which is pretty damn rich. Yeah. Who's doing all this disinforming? Who could it be? We're all trying to find the guy who did the this. The call is coming from within the house. Uh, meanwhile, in a very unusual meta twist for a high-profile televised legal proceeding, Infowars, Alex Jones's company, has been covering the trial extensively, which the court obviously advised Jones not to do, and which Jones's defense attorney probably isn't too happy about. Yeah. Uh, basically... Alex Jones would leave the courtroom and head right into the studio to do stuff like call the judge a demonically possessed dwarf goblin and call the jurors extremely blue collar folks who don't know what planet they're on while offering plenty of other extensive commentary on the whole case, which he 
referred to a bunch of times as kangaroo court. Um, and then uh, when he'd get back into court the next day, recordings of these Infowars uh, segments of his own trial would get played in court by the plaintiff's attorneys and Jones would get questioned about it. It was uh, a snake eating its own tail in a lot of ways. It seems like it would be bad judgment to mock the judge of the trial that you are a participant in. Yeah, this would be like if Johnny Depp and Amber Heard decided to like vlog on TikTok during uh, breaks in their trial. Honestly, you're describing something that I find completely believable and something that will happen oh, yeah. in the future. It's just most people, uh, you know, they accept that their lawyer knows what's best for them and their lawyer is going to say absolutely under no fucking circumstances should you Well, this was Jones's, like, what, fifth lawyer or something? Uh, it's like his tenth lawyer. Yeah, so... <laughs> I mean, and he also, like, another thing is, like, when you're on trial, your lawyer's like, there's going to be a lot of journalists outside waiting for when we come out. Uh, just say no comment. But no, he would go out and just uh, oh, he loves the pontificate to, you know, for like hours to these people. He, also he weird it. that he would describe in a negative sense the jury being blue collar folks from who think they're on a different planet uh, when that is exactly who his audience is. Yeah, well, I think he was talking mostly in the sense that uh, they don't, you know, to them, like, what's the difference between a thousand dollars and a million dollars? And this this part of the trial is about money, so like, I don't know. Just find can, me five dollars. Can we really trust these people to make an accurate assessment of what I owe to these people? Mm. Which should be nothing, by the way, because <laughs> I did nothing wrong. Uh, so the high point of the trial, however, came when it was revealed that Alex Jones's lawyer accidentally, <laughs> oops, that probably the biggest oopsie you could imagine, uh, sent two years worth of Alex Jones's text to the plaintiff's lawyers showing that Jones failed to produce court-ordered documents that he claimed he couldn't find, and also that he had lied under oath. Whoops. Uh, just to make that clear, <laughs> Alex Jones's lawyers yeah. accidentally sent a copy of Alex Jones's entire cell phone to the lawyer representing the families from Sandy Hook. Yeah, because and because throughout the earlier parts of the trial, they're like, all right, we need all the documents on your phone and your emails regarding Sandy Hook. So, I mean, the easy way would just be search term Sandy Hook, and he's like, ah, can't find anything. Ah, geez. Well, anyway, and they're like, uh, yeah, clearly you didn't do what we asked you to fucking do because it's all right here. Yeah, a bunch of other like rambling excuses like, well, that phone number's tied to many different phones. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Uh, either way, sir, here is the data, uh, which was sent to us by your lawyers. And by the way, they had multiple days to do anything related yeah. to uh, making this information uh, unusable There was court. definitely an opportunity. And they didn't. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, this is very unusual. This isn't supposed to happen. And yeah. in a lot of cases, the court will be like, yeah, okay. We're not going to count that. Yeah. Well, instead, the Sandy Hook lawyer just sat and waited for Alex Jones's lawyers to do anything. Yeah. And then only pounced on it once it was completely well within his rights to use it. It sounds like he even waited to, like, look at it because he's like, I don't want to get in trouble. I'll wait until the, the waiting period passes. And, All right. I guess we're good. And as you'll see in further clips, uh, d does his best to, to look at Alex Jones and be like, you can stop uh, yeah. incriminating yourself at any point. Yeah, I'm not I'm not your attorney. I'm actually the attorney for the people suing you. But I, I feel just as an attorney, I should let you know, you can shut the fuck up at any given point. Yeah, that you, is your you've already lost. Right? Please stop. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's just play the clip uh, because it is one of the rare times that a real life court hearing has been as exciting or more exciting than a TV courtroom drama. I mean, just here you go. Mr. Jones, you know how an iPhone works, right? You've had iPhone text messaging for several years now. Yeah. What does it mean if the messages are in blue? Whose I messages are those? Whose phone is this taken from? I don't know whose phone's taken from. I mean, I just, I turned the phone over and said, take stuff off. Can I have you look in the very bottom below the very bottom left corner? Is that your phone number? Yes. So you did get my text messages. And it said you didn't. Nice trick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Jones. Oh. Indeed. You didn't give this text message to me. You don't, you don't know where this came from. Do you know where I got this? No. Mr. Jones, did you know that 12 days ago, 12 days ago, your attorneys messed up and sent me an entire digital copy of your entire cell phone with every text message you've sent for the past two years, and when informed, did not take any steps to identify it as privileged or protect it in any way, 
And as of two days ago, it fell free and clear into my possession. And that is how I know you lied to me when you said you didn't have text message about saying you Did you know that? I See, I told you the truth. This is your Perry Mason moment. I gave them my phone. And then, Mr. Jones, you need to answer the question. No, I, you know I, this happened? No, I didn't know this happened. But I mean, I told you I gave him a phone over. Just, just and you said, the question. you said in your deposition, you searched your phone. You said you pulled down the text, did the search function for Sandy Hook. That's what you said, Mr. Jones, correct? And I had several several different phones with this number, but I did, yeah. Well, of course, I mean, that's why you got it. No, Mr. Jones, that's not why I have it. My lawyer sent it to you, but I'm hiding it. Okay. Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones, Please that's... just answer questions. There's no question. Mr. Bankston also only asked questions. Sure. Yeah, so the moment uh, of realization for Alex Jones, the moment he his face shows that he comprehends what is being said to him, it's, mm -hmm. it's absolutely magical. Also, he looks like shit. Yeah, instead of losing the color in your face when you get freaked out like this, it actually t made him more red, like he was yeah. about to pop. He is he what just the like... British call uh, a gammon-faced man. Okay. And uh, yeah, those texts, apparently they're just part of what was hundreds of gigabytes of data mistakenly shared with the plaintiff's lawyers. How is that even possible? Uh, I, w the only thing I can imagine is that it was attached to some email oh, and they geez. forgot to take the attachment off. Like that's the only, or accidentally, uh, like shared access to uh, cloud storage or something. Yeah. Had, had that to be. stored on the same drive. And, but it sounds like if it's described like, uh, the Sandy Hook lawyers say it was sent to them. Yeah. Like they didn't go snooping around and found it. It was probably attached to an email or I don't know, any other way that uh, negligence Whoops. happens. Got my we transfer links mixed up. Yeah. It, it, so Could yes. you please, please, please disregard? No, and they didn't even say that. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> they didn't. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, the text, that's just part of it. There's apparently a lot more in there and we don't know a whole lot about it. But yeah. the data did also apparently show that despite Jones claiming to have lost a bunch of money after Infowars was banned on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Apple and all that, um, their revenue actually went up because there's no better grift than the I am being silenced grift. Yeah. Uh, apparently at one point, Infowars is making more than $800,000 per day. Insane. So I think they're good for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, this trial is all about monetary damages. So, uh-oh, we now have a much better idea of this man's finances. But uh, also another key moment that we might as well play the clip of from this trial um, is of Judge Maya Gamble, the, uh, you know, the satanic uh, dwarf uh, woman, yeah, uh, re reprimanding Alex Jones for repeatedly lying on the stand. She is, you know, she's a judge, so it's it's understated. But this woman is clearly uh, at the end of her rope with this guy. Have a look, Mr. Jones. You may not say to this jury that you complied with discovery. That is not true. You may not say it again. You may not tell this jury that you are bankrupt. That is also not true. You may have filed for bankruptcy. I don't know that, but I've heard that. That doesn't put, that doesn't make a person or a company bankrupt. You're already under oath to tell the truth. You've already violated that oath twice today in just those two examples it seems absurd to instruct you again that you must tell the truth while you testify yet here i am you must tell the truth while you testify this is not your show you need to slow down and not take what you see as opportunities to further the message you're wanting to further. And instead, only answer the specific and exact question you have been asked. No asides. The comments about discovery, the comments about the larynx or whatever it was, the comments about bankruptcy, none of those were responsive to questions. They were just you abusing my tolerance and making asides to the jury improperly, and in at least two cases, untruthfully. Do you understand what I have said? 
Yes I, or no? Do you understand what I have said? Yes, I believe what I said was true. So I don't Yes, know. you believe everything you say is true, but it isn't. Your beliefs do not make something true. That is that is what we're doing here. Just because you claim to think something is true does not make it true. It does not protect you. It is not allowed. You are under oath. That means things must actually be true when you say them. Don't talk. <laughs> I love it. And I it, the the thing I forgot to point out is like <laughs> Alex Jones is losing his mind at this uh at realizing what had happened. But then briefly it like pans over to his lawyer who's just sitting there like Oh god. Yes, I've made the biggest mistake. What ever. what path of decision making in my life led me to this point? This Representing guy, a monster. This guy apparently isn't just some hack. Like he's a legit attorney. Like uh, Alex Jones is spending good money on this guy. It's going to come out in like 20 years that he actually sent it on purpose. I'm sure there's already an there are, there is, uh, thing yeah, about how this is a conspiracy. That's the conspiracy now. Yeah. yeah okay. And maybe Alex Jones was behind that too. Could be. Let's just fucking nuke this trial and then uh, then I can play the victim even longer. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, uh, back to uh, that, that blunder. Uh, he, he really blundered it. He did. Uh, he, of course, uh, obviously asked for the evidence to be withdrawn and for the judge to declare a mistrial. But those motions were denied, and that's at least partially because Jones's lawyer had asked for a mistrial over a dozen times already. <laughs> uh, but if you're thinking the that, boy who cried mistrial, yeah, if you're thinking that hundreds of gigabytes of Alex Jones's data might be useful beyond this trial, well, you're correct. Within hours, Rolling Stone reported that the January 6th House Committee was preparing to subpoena that data for use in its own investigation, Ooh. and it'll be very interesting to see what relevant documents and communications they find, because. They're going to be very interested in this. There's a lot, barely... of, uh, a lot of crossover yeah. between uh, the Alex Jones trial and the January 6th hearings. A lot of the same, uh, you know, characters. Yeah, I saw the the one thing that I saw that was apparently a conversation between Roger Stone and Alex Jones, uh, which I'm sure would be very sure. interesting. Yeah. yeah, Stone is Stone and Jones very close. Uh, so wouldn't be yeah. surprising at all if <laughs> there's some crosstalk there. I guess we'll see. Yeah. But anyways, again. For as much of a, a spectacle as this all was, and as enjoyable it is to see Alex Jones on the ropes, uh, this trial is about two parents whose lives were shattered yeah. when their six-year-old son, Jesse, was gunned down in a mass shooting, who then had to live in fear for their lives for years, thanks to Alex Jones labeling them as crisis actors. Mm -hmm. uh, both parents testified during the trial about the absolute hell that they've been through since then, uh, including uh, phone harassment, guns being fired at their homes, and also physical confrontations in the street. I guess the dad got like tackled by some random guy. Just Literal. living in fear constantly. Yeah, after the worst thing that could ever happen to anyone, and then then just being harassed. Not like it's, it's so maddening. It's literally hell on earth. Yeah, that that he that he put these people. They've already they've already had to go through uh, the worst possible thing any parent can go through, and then that's just the beginning of their troubles. It's yeah. horrific. It is unforgivably bad. But on Wednesday, closing arguments were made and Jones's lawyer used his closing argument to ask the jury to award $8 total and to quote the famous Martin Nymoller, First They Came poem. Uh, it's the one that starts with, first they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. And then it ends with, then they came for me and there was no no one left to speak for me. Hmm, what's that about? Uh, uh, yeah, well, the poem is about the Nazis and the Holocaust. Oh. And apparently this fucking guy is is trying to present what's happening to Alex Jones as fascism and not just the consequences of his own actions. Yeah, it's real fucking, uh, wow. He's really reading what I think he's reading and uh, somehow thinks this is relevant to this case. I keep saying I'm not surprised by things, but then, you know, I'm not. When Once it happens, I'm like, you know what? We saw, We all saw something like this happening. Yeah. Something like this kind. It was always heading to this moment. Mm -hmm. um, so as of when we're filming this on Thursday night, the jury has come to a decision about part of the damages. Alex Jones must pay the parents of Jesse Lewis $4.1 million in compensatory damages, which, you know, on one hand, that's a lot of money, but maybe not that much for Alex Jones and definitely nowhere close to the $150 million that they were seeking. Though, you know, you always ask for more than you yeah. expect to get. But... There also could be a lot more money coming. The next phase of the trial, because this isn't over, the next phase begins Friday when you're probably watching this, and it's about punitive damages, which are damages specifically intended to punish Jones and make him 
think twice if he wants to do this again. And that's where things could potentially get very interesting, uh, especially with all the information that has just been revealed uh, by Alex Jones's lawyer handing over a bunch of data to the defense. There could be stuff in there about his finances and how much money he might have tucked away in various places. Uh, the other person that uh, subpoenaed these uh, records was his ex-wife. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, that's uh, he is divorced and there's a that custody battle that uh, I think we talked about a long time ago. I, I guess it's still she probably wants to know how much he has because she's getting alimony. And this that was uh, the one. Was that the one where he said that uh, he forgot to do something for his kids because he had just eaten a big yeah, bowl he of ate chili? A big bowl of chili. And, you know, like <laughs> I'm not not thinking straight. Yeah. But I got that chili in my gut. Hmm. Uh, anyway, once this trial is said and done, um, it could be a lot of money. Uh, I, there's I've seen a couple legal analysts talk about how much. They might get in the second phase, and it, it could be a lot more than the 4.1 million in the first half. But uh, this will set precedent for how Jones's multiple other Sandy Hook defamation trials might play out, because he's got three more after this one. Mm -hmm. uh, altogether, the damages could add up to quite a lot, even if individually they seem undervalued. Um, so he'll be paying for this. Yeah, good. Uh, but speaking of right-wing grifters, we've got some brief updates on a couple of them who tried to parlay their grift success into actual political power by running for office. First up, remember Ron Watkins? Uh, he's the son of Jim Watkins, the Philippines-based owner of 8Coon, previously known as 8chan. And Ron is believed by many to have been the person secretly behind Q, the anonymous message board poster at the center of the QAnon conspiracy theory. The 2021 HBO documentary series Q Into the Storm makes that case while also spending a ton of one-on-one -on -one time with Ron, who is a total weeaboo dork with negative charisma and some honestly creepy vibes. Yeah, fascinating character, but um, yeah, would not want to spend extended periods of time with him. So kudos to that director mm -hmm. for doing it for us. Uh, at some point around the 2020 election, though, Ron moved from Japan back to the U.S. and briefly rebranded himself as some sort of data analyst expert who could prove the existence of election fraud. Uh, he was, I don't know if he was on Fox, but he was definitely on like Newsmax and mm -hmm. uh, OAN um, before pivoting again to now seeking electoral office by running for Congress uh, in Arizona and, of course, wearing lots of cowboy hats to yep. show that he's got the local spirit in him, <laughs> even though he's lived most of his life overseas. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, this guy has no charisma at all. Uh, he hasn't even spent the last several years in the U.S. It's not even clear what his ties are to Arizona specifically. Uh, and after some painfully underwhelming campaigning and debating... And uh, 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 <laughs> uh, promotional videos. Ooh. Yeah. Hard to watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, it seemed like this dude had zero chance of winning this Republican primary, but you never know these days. And also, I mean, he's literally Q. Yeah. Some so people are into that. The power. Um, well, that primary, it just happened this week. So the results are in. Um, how did Ron Q. Watkins do? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's not so great, apparently. Out of seven <laughs> candidates running in the primary, Ron Watkins appeared to have landed himself in dead last with just 3.7% of the overall vote. Damn. Uh, the projected winner, Eli Crane, garnered around nine times as many votes as Ron. So, a bloodbath, and that's a real shame. Damn. Too bad. You hate to see it, don't you? There are a bunch of, like, weirdo Trumpies, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, winning, which is unnerving. Yeah, there's a lot of them. It's just that um, you know, we're finding that a lot of these people who garner certain types of right-wing fame, they don't have what it takes. You got to be more of a Marjorie Taylor Greene mm -hmm. to make it electorally with these people. Yeah. You got to be loud, proud, and uh, completely misinformed and insane. Yes, yeah. I would say the insane part is probably the yeah the biggest point there. Uh, meanwhile, remember Mark McCloskey? He's the guy who, along with his wife Patricia, clumsily brandished guns at Black Lives Matter protesters making their way through their neighborhood and became such a big hit with the MAGA crowd that they got a speaking slot at the 2020 Republican National Convention and were featured in Nick Lutzko's hit song, I Want to Be at the RNC. Mm -hmm. I want to meet Patricia McCloskey. <laughs> Probably their most notable moment. Yeah. Um, it also came out following the whole gun incident that the McCloskeys are pretty much hated by everyone else living in their expensive neighborhood that they were trying to protect. And they also have a long history of filing frivolous lawsuits against basically anyone who upsets them in any way. They were like Mecca Karens. Yes. Yeah. Final boss Karen. So shit. them, you know, Pointing guns at people, it's like, yeah, seems like something they would do. Yeah. Anyways, Mark McCloskey also tried to parlay his time in the right-wing spotlight into elected office, running in the GOP primary for one of Missouri's U.S. Senate seats. So, how did he do? 
Well, look, would you look at that? He got an even smaller share of the vote than Ron Watkins did. Just 3%. In fairness, though, while Ron Watkins ended up dead last in seventh place, Mark McCloskey ended up in fifth place with about two dozen even bigger losers below him. Yeah, so... But now both uh, Watkins and McCloskey can say that they're actual members of the three percenters. <laughs> they are. There's a lot of clout that comes with that. I'll take my streamy award and go. Thank you, nomination committee. Now, the clear winner in this Missouri Senate race, though, was Eric Schmidt with 45.7% of the vote. Which makes sense, because he was endorsed by Donald Trump. Maybe. Well, technically. Uh, <laughs> sort of. So, okay. Trump endorsed Eric in a statement. He did not use last names. He made a big statement, uh, made a big fuss about how he was going to do his endorsement. And then when he did his endorsement, uh, he said he endorsed Eric, which, okay, sounds like Eric Schmidt. Except there were two Eric's in this race. Eric Schmidt and Eric Greitens. Actually, there was a third Eric, Eric McElroy, the... Uh, the black sheep of the McElroy podcasting family, I guess. Uh, <laughs> One but, of the golfers? But the, the first two Eric's were considered the real contenders in this mm -hmm. race. So so which Eric was it, Mr. President? Well, that didn't matter because yeah. both Eric's immediately came out with statements saying how grateful and honored they were to accept Trump's endorsement. This was so <laughs> just like... <sighs> Another one of those things where it's so funny if it wasn't affecting people's realities. Yeah. Where it's just like, you could like you know that he was literally hedging his bets by endorsing Eric. Yeah. Like in particular, it's brilliant. Because if if he had just said Eric, then uh, obviously like Trump's committees or whatever would have been like, oh well, he was. Let's clarify here. But no, they left it uh, completely up in the air so that they could win no matter what. Yeah, and it was, it's, it's it, this is some real art of the deal shit. This is why this man is a master of the deal. Uh, Cause the the two Eric's in this race, like they were like the two big hits with the MAGA people. There was a third uh, top candidate who was more like the moderate GOP, but both Eric's were really gunning for that Trump endorsement. And we're kind of dividing, uh, you know, the commentariat of the right wing. Mm -hmm. So this was, he's just like, oh, and here it is. The, the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm going with Eric. Woo! Wait. Oh, he's probably talking about my Eric, though, so that's good. Yeah, just odd and guaranteed, like, the Eric that won, probably afterwards, if a meeting with Trump, like, yeah, you know, I was talking about you, right? I just wanted yeah. to, we were all having a little bit of fun. Uh, Eric Schmidt ended up winning, obviously, but uh, it's still unclear which Eric Trump meant to endorse. Well, obviously, Eric Schmidt, because he won. Or Eric Trump, his son. Yeah. <laughs> he, he went BM all by himself today. We love him. <laughs> Uh, and, yeah, and even within the magosphere, there was lively debate about it with people like Rudy Giuliani and Matt Gates celebrating Eric Greitens' Trump endorsement and others like Dan Bongino and Dana Loish uh, insisting that it was actually Eric Schmidt who'd got the endorsement. So, you know what? Let them fight. Uh, yeah, you love to see it. I, I love this kind of uh, intra right wing civil war shit. Mm -hmm. um, Especially when it's based off something so stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know, like... I don't know who holds that seat. I mean, it's Missouri, so probably. Actually, I don't know. I don't know anything about Missouri. It's a weird state. It's just sort of right there in the middle. It's got its own Kansas. Kansas yeah. City, Missouri. Yeah, they, what's, that, what's that about? Very confusing. Um, uh, did you see the, well, the theory, I guess, that Trump buried his wife on his golf course for a tax break? Yeah, so that hasn't been uh, proven, but... Uh, it is a known thing in New Jersey that uh, setting up a private burial plot on land that you own uh, gets you some tax breaks from the state of New Jersey for running a cemetery. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did his his first wife. He did just sort of toss that body in a hole. Mm -hmm. And uh, like it, it does not look like a very uh, dignified burial befitting. A member of the Trump clan. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she's buried on his golf course. And a lot of people think they did that just so that he could uh, write it off on his taxes, which could be true. Sounds like something he would do. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, before we move on to the headlines part of this show, it's time for a word from our sponsor, starting with HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Savor every last second of summer with HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers fresh, quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week, allowing you to enjoy the delicious flavors of the season right from home. Skip the grocery store and spend more time soaking up the last of the summer sun. 
HelloFresh Market is a one-stop shop for all your mealtime needs with a curated selection of quick breakfasts, lunches, snacks, desserts, and more. And uh, also, just FYI, HelloFresh owns Green Chef, who has also sponsored this show, and they're both great. We love the amount of options between the two of them. Uh-huh. And uh, one thing we especially like about HelloFresh is that if you're feeling vegetarian curious, they've also got lots of delicious options for dipping your toe into vegetarian cooking. It's something that I have very much enjoyed because uh, it uh, adds to the uh, the eclectic mix of options. Yes. Uh, on next week's menu, they've got hoisin sweet potato and mushroom bowls with uh, ginger rice and chili soy mayo and cucumber salad stuffed pita pockets with hummus, feta, and creamy dill sauce. Mm. Go to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird16 and use code WeeklyWeird16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird16 and code WeeklyWeird16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. And this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. <laughs> if you haven't heard already, it's smooth sack summer. <laughs> when you're playing in the summer Ding! sun, <laughs> when you're playing in the summer sun, make sure that you're scraped Scaped, sorry. Yeah, don't scrape. These yeah. are, this is the anti-scrape. Scaped, that's short for manscaped. Uh -huh. From pubes to bum. That's right. This is the summer to keep your balls cool while still looking hot with manscaped. The leader in below-the-belt grooming is making sure we all have a ball this summer by giving our pants panthers... Every, pants panthers? Every, oh, pants partners. Pants, oh, pants partners. Hey, cool, though. E came up with a new term. Everything they need to stay fresh. Dive head first into smooth sack summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with our code Weird News. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything that you need to prepare that summer bod. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, their Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor and new multifunction on off switch can engage a travel lock and it gives you the ability to turn the 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. Did I mention this trimmer is waterproof too? Beach, lake, or shower. <laughs> At your own risk, everywhere. Uh, this razor will devour even the strongest pubes. If it's at the beach, make sure it's a proper beach. Yeah. Check your local regulations. Yeah. Now that you have the perfect haircut, use Manscaped's liquid formulations to keep that freshness even at the hottest barbecues. Most importantly, use the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant to stay cool in the heat. With a soothing aloe vera formula, it's the best in the business for below the waist freshness, and this clear drying formula will keep looking good while smelling good. Mm. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag that will bring your comfort to another level. Wearing sandals with some nasty toenails during the summer months? Ugh. Take a look at the Shears 2.0, a luxury nail grooming kit. This kit includes stainless steel nail cutters, tweezers, and grooming scissors. With the performance package, your balls will be ready to impress, but make sure you cover the rest with the Shears 2.0. Get 20% off plus free shipping with our code WEIRDNEWS, all one word, at manscaped.com. That is 20% off plus free shipping with the code WEIRDNEWS at manscaped.com. It's smooth sack summer, boys. Get on board or get left behind. Bing! Anyway, now it's time for the weirdest headlines of the week, starting with the kind of headline we see every summer. A Utah man arrested for starting a wildfire told authorities he was trying to burn a spider with a lighter. Yeah, I mean, it's got some, you know, it's real dry out there, so Listen, even a lighter can do some damage. If I knew 60 acres was going to go up instantly, I wouldn't have done it, obviously. But hey, did you see the spider? Yeah, and can you imagine how many spiders I ended up killing? I don't know how many. The, the thing, like, you hear this and you're like, oh, was it like a spider in his house? Because we've, we've heard, had a few headlines about like, someone trying to kill a spider in their house. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's stupid as hell, but it is a spider in your house. This guy was out. He was outside. He was on like a hiking trail. Why do you need do to? I, did you shoot every panther yeah. or that oh, panther what, cougar that you came across? Why, Mountain lion? Yeah. What are you trying to kill spiders on a hike? Just walk away from it. Yeah. You're outdoors. Do you see a snake and instantly go for the machete? Yeah. Like, just leave nature be. Also, like, yeah, if you're obviously people are very scared by spiders, sometimes irrationally, but sometimes rationally. There's some bad ones. There's obviously bad ones, but uh, you don't you want know, to go stick in your hands in dark places. A lot of them are there for a good reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's the circle of life. It really is. And now there is no life in those 60 yeah, acres. Yeah, exactly. 
Exclusive! NorCal Sheriff orders raid on Indiana Batmobile Garage, allegedly as a favor for friend. Yeah, I wanted to go into more detail with this one, but this is a, just a great story of a local sheriff up in San Mateo County mm -hmm. uh, just absolutely blatantly abusing his uh, power and authority because uh, some, some dipshit yuppie realtor ordered a uh, authentic, officially licensed uh, Batman 66 Batmobile mm -hmm. with the flamethrower in the back and all the gadgets inside. So cool. He ordered one. It was like $200,000, but then he stopped making his payments. So the guy who makes it, this nice man over in Indiana, uh, he was like, all right, well, you're going to the back of the line then until I get the payments. Like, it's not going to be ready when I said it was because he didn't give me the money. And the guy was uh, apparently very upset by this and called up his good friend, the local sheriff, uh, to ask for a favor. And the sheriff spent $10,000 sending deputies from Northern California to Indiana to, like, hassle this guy and, like, raid his office and, like, dump out his files. And, like, I guess now they're, like, charging him with fraud and stuff. It's Jesus. It's ridiculous. And, uh, it's yeah. way outside of your jurisdiction. Yeah, Bob. it's, it's, uh, this was covered by, like, the local, you know, ABC7 up there. And it's the most critical I've seen local news anchors be towards, like, cops maybe ever well like uvaldi was pretty uh yeah i mean uh, yeah for something non-lethal i yeah, guess yeah. like they're they're just like going in on it. they're just like yeah, this it's is fucking, fucking ridiculous. outrageous yeah it's like, like the stupidest... they're spending your money on this by the yeah. way yeah yeah local money first of all like without even any of that just yeah. this guy going after someone for a vendetta because someone couldn't pay his bills is yeah. like outrageous. Literally defund the police just to stop them from doing this kind of bullshit. They yeah. clearly don't know how to balance a budget and spend their money wisely. So we're taking, you know, taking their allowance away until they learn to behave themselves, which is going to be never. So sorry, you're not getting the money back. Yeah. Well, obviously, also, this sheriff should have been like, well, if this guy's not making the payments on his Batmobile, surely I'm not, not going to get my kickback. Yeah, I don't even know. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm sure there was some sort of favor involved. Yeah. But um, it is also like the guy's like, a, it's just so perfect. The guy's a fucking douchebag realtor. And, you know, people talk a lot about how the police are really just like private security for the real estate business. They exist mostly to just keep property values up mm -hmm. and keep landlords and whatnot happy. And it's just it's just so fucking perfect that this is like. The San Mateo Sheriff's Department acting as mercenaries on behalf of a fucking realtor who didn't get his Batmobile on time. And couldn't even pay his bill for the what he, what he ordered, yeah, apparently. Yeah, they, they, they interviewed the, like, the Batmobile guy, and it's like so sad. He seems like just a nice man. He's like, I've been a Batman fan my whole life, and like this is a fun little, fun little hobby I have on the side. I get to work on cars and, and give people the joy of the Batmobile. And, and now this happens to me. <sighs> Damn. Anyways, let's move on. Alabama prisons say reporters skirt too short to witness execution. What is going on? <laughs> what the fuck is going on in the world? <laughs> ma'am, ma'am, that skirt is way too short for you to come in and watch this man be electrocuted. It would be wrong. It would be, it would what if be, he gets a boner while he's being electrocuted? It would be immoral, yeah. I, I love the... This, uh, these are our priorities. This is... You know what? This one actually shocked me. Like, they literally, uh, apparently... No pun intended. They got out the fucking tape measure, like, at a middle school yeah, dance. Put your, put your hands by your sides, and if it goes yeah. past your... or uh, Yeah, if your fingers go past it or whatever. She, this reporter had to go... Like, she borrowed... <laughs> She's like, does anyone have fucking pants? Like, this is my job. I'm gonna uh -huh. be in trouble if I can't do this. And some cameraman for another station had those... Uh, yeah, in his car, he had those pants that uh, fly fishermen wear. Hell so yeah. she wore those. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so, uh, but, yeah, totally, totally normal to uh, just sit in a room and uh, watch a man be executed by the state, but, you know, You're there sure is a, there's a dress code for a reason, folks. Yeah. Come on. <sighs> Exclusive video shows deputy baptizing suspect instead of taking her to jail, which sounds like, uh, you know, in a lot of cases, uh, yeah, maybe I'll just take the baptism, thanks. Give me a good dunk and... We'll put oh, this the all, sins have been washed put away. Put this all behind us, yeah. but obviously it was a lot more like coercive and fucking weird than that. Mm -hmm. Like for starters, any cop that's gonna make that offer to a suspect is uh, it's probably just the tip of the iceberg. And apparently it was. This guy's got uh, looking at all sorts of uh, fucked up charges from his brief time on the force. Well, he had, he was missing a lot of saves. Had to catch up. Yeah, the church was like, you need to pump these numbers up. 
You're not yeah. saving enough people. Not enough souls. Saving. You keep shooting them. You gotta save them. <gasps> Where do sinners exist? Wait, hold, hold on a second. I'm a cop. Yeah. I got all the I sinners. I deal with sinners every day. This is perfect. Yeah, this it's like a it's like a evangelical Christian version of like Judge Dread. It's Judge, Jury, and Baptizer. Baptizer. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Escaped giant tortoise halts trains for two hours in UK. <laughs> well, at least they didn't just plow over it. They they did. Oh, no. But uh, I guess it's okay. But yeah, it, it got hit by a fucking train. And because it's shell, because these, these things are built so well, the shell got cracked. But mm -hmm. when, once they found them, they, I guess they were able to patch them up all right. <sighs> But uh, lucky turtle. Yeah, a slow moving tortoise. Sorry, giant tortoise escaped from like some animal sanctuary and um, headed right to the train tracks. Probably it's like I'm too old. I'm 200 years old. And you all I've seen train. is things get worse and worse. Just take me. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I don't think so, Mr. Mr. Tortoise. You're going to live another hundred years. Ha <laughs> ha. No, gonna, you're going to impregnate every tortoise we have in this conservatory. No, I'm tired of all this fucking. Yeah. Uh, Lollapalooza's security guard faked mass shooting threat to leave work early, prosecutors say. What the fuck? Yeah, this is just last weekend. Yeah. Lollapalooza. Uh-huh. A great festival. Yeah. Uh, I had a good time. It's, it's, uh, I mean, I went when I was younger, but it, uh, the lineup this year, I wasn't like, yeah, I, I even like looked up the live stream and I was like, I really don't even care to watch this. I went in like 2010. It was pretty fun. Yeah, I went around the same time. Maybe we're at the same one. It, it was also like 100 degrees and 100% humidity because it's yeah. right on Lake Michigan. Yeah, uh, it rained out one of the days yeah, I was there. Real gross. It's, everyone's BO. It's, it's nasty. But uh, yeah. yeah, this security guard, I guess, wanted to get off work early. So she um, faked a mass shooting. She's like, she sent a text to herself with some like uh, burner service. It's pretty loud. It was like, oh, there's a mass shooting at Lollapalooza. And she showed it to her bosses. There was like a mass shooting threat. And they're like, oh my God, we got to investigate this. They got the security team on it. Can and I go home? And they're like, wait, so where did you hear this from? And he's like, uh, my friend saw it on uh, a Facebook. And they're like, can you find us that Facebook thing? And she's like, yeah, hold on. And like went out and created a fake, created a Facebook post like right then on her phone and then screenshotted it and deleted it and showed it to them. And they're like, all right, this is a little... Uh, uh, we have our doubts now. And, um, yeah, now she's in big, big trouble. Yeah, you can imagine. Because, uh, like, the, the Chicago PD, like, traced the fucking, like, Facebook group. Had to get warrants to and just trace it right back to her. And it's like, okay, you did a, you did a fake terror threat. Yeah. What did you so, think was uh, going to happen? Not going to be Not going to be coming into work much anymore, I guess, so... Where could you possibly want to go to? You're right there at the, the, one of the greatest music festivals yeah. in the entire country. So you wanted to go next door to the Chicago Academy of Art, a lovely museum. Mm. And go see the bean. Someone, oh my God, someone recently on TikTok licked the bean. Why? I, I guess I, I... Everyone puts their fucking hands on that thing. It's like what kissing the Blarney Stone. Don't do that either. Mm -mm. Airbnb, a new owner, apologized for 1830 slave cabin listing marketed as luxurious stay. Yeah, there's a lot of this sound in the South. People still get married at plantations. Um, I had to actively divert yeah. any possible. You got married in Georgia. It's a, yeah, it's a real it's, minefield. I was just like, we can't, we, we can't pick that place. It's like, uh, how do, if we exclude anywhere that like slavery might have happened, <laughs> not a lot of options left over. That's why we went up into the mountains. This is why Sherman should have burned down every plantation in the South before uh, finishing up. Just yeah, it was clean so, slate. Looking at uh, locations where my wife's family lives, I was just like, well, okay, 90% of this can't do that. Can't. Yeah. Why? Why? Okay. And it's like, it's one thing to hold events there. It's like in bad taste, but some people get really into it and they do it like themed. Like it's everyone really dress weird. up like the antebellum South and, uh, you know, maybe we'll have some servants. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be getting paid, but they, just for realism's sake, I'd like them all to be black. Is that too much? And um, <sighs> yeah, I guess this Airbnb it was like another. It, what it actually it turned out it wasn't even actually the slave quarters. It was like the former owner had just marketed as that. It was like it was built after slavery, but the the former owner for the all those history buffs out there. Yeah, just like I guess labeling it as the former slave quarters made it better for business, which is pretty fucking suspicious. Like, yeah. who are these people who? Otherwise, wouldn't have wanted to stay there, but they're like, oh, slave quarters. Hmm, that's just my fetish. Yes. 
So yeah, fucked up. They should have burned down the South. I say again. Plenty of wonderful barns to get married at in yeah. the South. You just go to a barn. You put some of those circus lights up inside of it. Everybody has a great time. Get married in the uh, the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid. The uh, Why wouldn't you? That's the perfect place. The the only true monument to the, the Southern states. Yeah. I mean, one of the tallest. That's without any weird connotations. One of, one of the tallest pyramids <laughs> on Earth. Too. I love that Wikipedia. It's like tallest pyramids are there. It's like built like 5,000 years ago. <laughs> Bass <laughs> Pro <laughs> Shops. <laughs> it is big. Yeah. Cracker Barrel sparks uproar for plant-based sausage. Critics say is woke. This would be like the one place where they're just like, ah, uh-uh, get it off the menu. Even though I'm not even, but this yeah, is, this they're is, not replacing anything. Yeah. They're just offering like vegetarian options. For this is America in a in a fucking microcosm. It's yeah, just like it's all these people who like they, you know, when you even even if it's just a, an additional choice. Yeah. They don't like that. It offends them that it's even on the menu. Yeah. No one's forcing you to eat it, but the fact that it's even there. I bet the cooks in the back hate this shit, right? Am I right? Am I right? Uh, But no, this is a a perfect example, like just boiled down to such a small issue where it's just like, this doesn't affect you. You you can avoid this very easily by not having anything to do with it, not ordering it in this case. Yeah. Uh, But it exists because some people like that. And it's like, well, no. I, get it out of here. It's ruining everything. And this- like, honestly, the the Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods sausage is their best offering because real sausage which with meat is just sort of, uh, before it's cooked, it's just sort of an amorphous like yeah. blob of meat and seasonings and other shit. Like, it's very easy to fake. It's probably the most believable, uh, you know, non-meat analog out there. Not that these people would ever try it, but it, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. I told my mom that I made like, the other day, I mean, they were fantastic. They were tofu lettuce cups with like, had some like nuts and spices and all this stuff in it. But it was, it was tofu, but I crumbled it and I like pan fried it. And I used, uh, there's this like Japanese barbecue sauce. It's yeah. really good. So I made that, you know, I was like, oh my God, mom, they had the best dinner. It was super simple. And it was like these tofu things. And she's like, tofu, ew. And I was like, for what reason? I mean, it does look really gross when it's not cooked yet. It's, I guess. It's, it's just like, a block. Yeah, it's like milky jello. Like It's, it's not even like jello. It's just firm, like extra firm, so it fries uh, well, up. Well, there are different firmnesses you can buy. But I, I will say, visually, tofu is pretty unappealing. Um, once you actually have it in a dish, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. But I can see why some people might be put off by it. But it's fucking 2022. Like, is, 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 what is this, the fucking 80s? It's literally just a, a block of protein that will taste like anything you cook yeah. it with. Yeah, it's all about seasoning, which is like also the case with chicken. Try try a little experiment. Just cook a little piece of chicken on the stove with no seasoning at all and tell, tell us what that tastes like. It tastes like fucking nothing. It's all about seasonings. Mm-hmm. There you go. Anyway, dumb. And final headline, 99-year-old Mexican grandma's final wish granted. A giant penis on her gravestone. <laughs> And it's a big penis. Love it's it. like a six foot dong. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and it is hard. It's rock hard. Yeah. Um, Makes for a de- very interesting uh, Dia de los Muertos. Yeah, it's got balls too. Yeah. It's circumcised. Well, the balls keep Catholic it up, hey, country. You know, up straight. Yeah. They. Um, yeah, this lady, this old lady, the matriarch of the family, she was really into dicks. Um, in like a way that I don't know if it translates well, but. Uh, I don't know. I guess in English it'd be like, you know, it'd be the kind of thing like even the ladies in this family have got balls. Mm-hmm. It was that sort of thing. Yeah. She, but she loved the imagery of the dick and wanted one on her casket. And they're like, are you sure? And she's like, yes, yes, mm-hmm. do it. And so they did. And now it's there. And it's uh, definitely leaves an impression. Certainly does. Something, a uh, real conversation started at the, at the cemetery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we didn't do a news dump this week because uh, it's a short week for us. Uh, I guess on Monday or Tuesday, uh, we'll have to get into all the crazy things going on in the world of entertainment right now because, oh boy, Warner Brothers is back at it again. A a company that we dealt with personally for several years and constantly found their decision making to be absolutely baffling has really topped themselves this time. Yeah, Uh, with the Discovery merger, now that the... uh, the Things are in place and the gears are turning. Uh, there's a lot going on, and a lot of it is very confusing. But uh, 
It's basically they they did a they did a Netflix speed run. Yeah. Uh, they did the like fledgling service to best library around to oh god. We're hitting a wall with our metrics and we need to scramble right now. So half of you are fucking fired and we're just going to cancel a bunch of projects uh, just to write them off on our taxes. In various stages <laughs> of production. Some yeah. of them at the end of production. Some of them ready to go. But not, hey, Ezra Miller is still our Flash, baby. Yeah. And there was new reports that came out about him uh, on Thursday as well. So yeah, sorry, we have a sort of a short week and then next week it might be short. My mom's coming to town. The WV stuff is still developing too. Yeah. They just had their upfront, so there'll probably be more to talk about. I'm cooking about tofu that. for my mom next week when she comes to visit, so I'll Ugh. have a report on that for everyone. do a little airplane. Come on, mom. No, I'm just going to tell it's chicken. Yeah, it's chicken, oh, mom. Yeah. There you go. You've been tricked. <laughs> the old people are now the young children. Yeah. You have to trick them. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, if you do want to watch more episodes, uh, we do have a mo our most recent episode of Tech News Day, which deals, of course, with crypto pyramid Ponzi schemes. And then uh, earlier in the week, we covered that Atlanta Music Festival getting shut down because uh, the, basically the state was like, you can't tell people they can't bring guns in here. Okay, so we're just not going to do it. Yeah. So no. check out both of those videos, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.